Hello, Andy. What's your story? Andy? Yeah, Andy. Cheeky. Hi, everyone. Really missing you. How are you all doing? I haven't seen you for such a long time, it seems. And you can tell by my hair. Look at it. Anybody else out there got bad hair? Katie, you got bad hair? My hair's always like this. It's a bird's nest. Anyway. Um, so my story is that I was born in Staines, um, so not very far away, and I was born in the same year as England won the World Cup, so work that one out. Um, I lived at home with mum and dad, and I've got one brother who's a couple of years older than me, um, and I, I uh, went to college and studied graphic designing, so art's been a big uh, thing for me in my life. Um, and then when I was uh, 17, so I hadn't left college yet, my older brother decided to get up and go off to Australia and uh, he's still there now, but I do see him quite regularly, which is really good. Um, um, after I left college, I got a job with the civil service, so I'm still with them now. It was the Lord Chancellor's department that I joined, although it's been called lots of other things since then. Uh, and that's where I still am. So, wad. <laughs> How did you become a Christian? <laughs> Good question. Well, first of all, my parents uh, didn't go to church, or my brother, so I come from a, a family that had no church upbringing whatsoever. Um, so for me, I feel really quite fortunate that I found myself going to a, a youth group with the church. I didn't really realise what a Christian youth group was at the time when I, when I joined, but I started getting involved in Bible studies as well. And I, I began to learn that actually Jesus was a real person, not just an historical figure, but a real person who actually wanted a relationship with me right now. And for me, that was a, a, an incredible thing to learn. Um, and I decided to follow Jesus. Uh, in, I can tell you when, because here I've got my very first battered Bible. Look at that, my first Bible. And it says that uh, I decided to follow Jesus it, on the 1st of August 1980. So that's when it was. Old, old, she says. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I got involved in Bible studies, um, uh, prayer meetings, we, we went to early morning prayer meetings in our youth group. We, we tried to be really radical uh, in the church. <laughs> we went to these early morning Bible, uh, prayer meetings that started sort of six o'clock in the morning. Of course we all fell asleep, but we thought we were doing something really good. <laughs> and, um, and then we used to have really cool weekends away that I really enjoyed. Um, and while I was at the youth group, that's where I met Sue, my lovely, lovely wife. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, we got married in 1988 um, and Sue and I have been incredibly busy when we look back on our Christian life since 1998 and what we've done, 1988, um, I didn't say, at least I didn't say 1888, uh, <laughs> Could have been. We've, um, we've been involved in various youth works, uh, we've been involved in two, two uh, church plants. We've worked for East to West as volunteers for a couple of years with Andy Burns, that was really good. Um, and we've even been house group leaders as well, so we've done uh, lots of varied things in the church. Andrew! <laughs> What's going on now? See what I have to put up with. <laughs> so, so, um, What's going on now? Well, I'm still involved with youth work, <laughs> which um, which is great for me. It's something that I, I love doing. And I, I suppose my thing really is is getting uh, young people engaged with the Bible. Um, I want the Bible to be relevant and interesting to the youth. Um, and don't want to preach to people because I remember that as a youth being preached to uh, didn't really enjoy that but I, I want really the young people to try and discover the Bible for themselves and uh, well and to discover themselves in the Bible that's what I really hope for um, uh, so and right now what's going on down is lockdown of course you know we're all in lockdown aren't we sadly 
Um, and for us, I don't know, life's crazy at the moment, isn't it? Uh, Katie over here, I mean, I think she's really in lockdown more than anyone else. And I think she's she's really missing her friends, aren't you? Yeah, see, see by that face. Um, the boys, it's really strange for our boys because they're still putting on their school uniform every day and going off to a really deserted school. And, and Sue and I are both going out to work every day. Um, and, you know, work situations are a bit crazy at the moment. Um, you're working in a strange environment and it's unsettling. And I guess, to be honest with you, it's very tiring as well. Um, but one thing that has really been inspiring me is um, the good old laugh. Lost it. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's Katie jumping around on the trampoline. You've knocked my blow. Psalm 23. Right, let me find it. The good old Psalm 23, but uh, in the message. Um, and uh, it says, God my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You've bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I am not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty sh shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head and my cup brims with blessings. Your beauty and your love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Ah. Boom, 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 boom. That sounds great, doesn't it? So anyway, nice to see you all. Take care. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you again one day. So We're going to do some we're carrying on in our series at looking at an overview of the whole Bible. And we've already looked at parts one to five, creation, the fall, the patriarchs, out of Egypt, the promised land and the judges. And today's part is called United Kingdom. Now, I'm not talking about Great Britain, uh, which is also known as the United Kingdom, uh, but it's a similar concept. We're going to see the tribes of Israel asked to have one king rule over all of them, an idea that they've picked up from the nations around them. So we're covering the books of 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 1 Chronicles, and the wisdom literature, which includes Job, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, plus some of the Psalms and Song of Songs, which was written by Solomon, one of our characters today. The other characters are Samuel, Saul, David, and as we mentioned, Solomon. And the date is roughly 1100 to 900 BC. In our last episode, we said that there is a glimmer of hope in the story of the king to come. Now, this isn't in the idea of kings at all in the book of Kings. And we'll read in 1 Samuel that actually God was very against the nation of Israel having a king because he was their king, or he is their king. So this request goes against the relationship that they had agreed to live by and live within. So the, the hope that we see is actually thinking forward to Jesus, because we know that he is the king of kings and he is coming. He is the only true and proper king of God's people. So that's where we see the hope. So kings were not a good idea uh, and a man called Samuel warns them about this. Now you may be thinking, who's this Samuel? Well, we left off at the end of Judges and we had a quick look at the story of Ruth. And today we turn to one Samuel, which begins with another story of a fantastic woman who was faithful to God and her name was Hannah. And as you've guessed correctly, she is Samuel's mum. Hannah is a fantastic woman of God. She knew God's character and trusted him. And what grieved Hannah was that she wasn't able to have a child. And her husband's other wife uh, would constantly taunt her about this. 
So one day when they all went up to worship and sacrifice to God at Shiloh, where Eli was priest with his sons. Now, hang on. We haven't mentioned priests before, right? Now, they're not quite like a vicar, like Esther, for example, but they are similar. But we'll come back to Eli, so don't forget his name. So they've gone up and Hannah weeps bitterly and she prays to God and asks him to give her a child. And in return, she would offer that child into his service for all the days of its life. And you know what? She does. Hannah is blessed with Samuel and she gives him into the Lord's service where he grows up with Eli, learning how to be a priest. Okay. So now we should talk about priests. The idea of priesthood can be found in the section during Out of Egypt when the law is given. The tribe of Levi was designated as the priestly tribe. So they would minister to the whole nation, being a sort of intercessor between the people and God. And there is loads written about what they had to do, what they had to wear, when they had to do things and how they would have to do it and how they could come into the presence of the Lord. Now you may be thinking, so how does Samuel come into this? Well, Eli, the priest, had sons who were, let's say, not the best priests. In fact, the Bible says they were wicked. They had no regard for God and committed many great sins in God's sight. So God spoke against the house of Eli. In 1 Samuel 3, we see God speak to Samuel as a young boy, uh, and he will continue to do this for the rest of Samuel's life. And when he is talking to him, he tells Samuel of how he has spoken against the house of Eli, and he tells him what will happen. So then Samuel, uh, the next morning, tells Eli what God has said. And it's after that that we see that happen. And because Samuel keeps hearing from God, uh, another term comes into play. Samuel is a prophet, which means God gives him words to speak to his people and the world. And Samuel actually grows up to become the leader of Israel, a bit like Joshua or Moses. And when he grew old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. And unfortunately, they didn't follow in his ways either. They turned to dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. So it's at this point that Israel asks for a king. And we read this in chapter 8, that's 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5. They said to Samuel, Samuel. 